What's up everyone, George Lehman here. Making this video mostly for my clients, but um, everyone's welcome to learn from it if you can. Uh, these are the exercises that I like best for improving my deadlift, and I have a lot of my clients do them. Almost all of my clients, because most people are looking for a bigger deadlift. Um, these are deadlift stance box squats. I use a pretty low bar position, use a parallel box, sit back, pause for a second, and then explode up. These are the best thing I have ever done for getting leg drive and strength off the floor. Um, if you're not doing them and you deadlift conventional, you probably should be. They're, they're pretty incredible. Um, I learned about it from a, a Finnish deadlifter who used to like squatting with his deadlift stance, and I figured why not use a box and make it even more effective. Um, this is my second favorite. Um, well, I don't actually want to put them in order, but this is another great one. This is amazing for strength around your knee. Um, I take a, it's, I call it Romanian deadlifts, but I, I need to show my clients how these are done because everyone does them differently. You go to about mid shin and you don't have to lock out. Um, as you'll see, I'm shaking on these because I pulled 800 some pounds the day beforehand and my central nervous system is, is pretty fucked up, pretty, uh, pretty beat down. But this is one of the best posterior chain exercises you can do and it will make you super strong right around your knees, which is where a lot of people's weak point is. I don't lock out because it's high reps. Um... And mostly because I'm just training it right around the knee. Uh, Gates rows. An amazing back exercise for improving your deadlift. I use my deadlift stance. I use my deadlift grip. And I let the bar come right down about to my knee. I use a little bit of lower back here. And I use a little bit of lower back as I go heavier. This is going to build incredible lat strength um, and lockout strength on your deadlift. Because as you can see, it's basically going to build extreme explosive strength right around your knee. Pulling your shoulder blades back. So, probably the best lat exercise for your deadlift. Um, Bare-handed shrugs, double overhand, very hard grip exercise for me. I can go up to probably a thousand pounds on shrugs, but I'd much prefer to use this and improve my grip because that's my weak area. Done shrugs for years, great way to get used to heavy weight, pack a bunch of meat on your upper back. Uh, T-bar rows. I didn't want to set up a T-bar, but I used a cable instead. T-bar rows are a great lat exercise. Again, I try and use my deadlift stance. If you notice, I let my shoulders come forwards and I pull them back. That's the lat activation you're looking for when, when training your lats for a bigger deadlift. It's pulling your shoulder blades back. Letting them forwards, pulling them back. Because at the start of a deadlift, your shoulder blades are going to be rather relaxed, kind of down to give you a longer, uh, a longer lever to pull with. And at the end of a deadlift, you have to have your shoulder blades back, so pull them back. Another great, great lat exercise. This next one I'm doing here is a chest-supported row. Really awesome ab exercise, actually, because it teaches you to push your stomach out and brace it against a pad. Really good uh, core activation. But as you can see what I'm doing here, I let my shoulders come all the way forwards and again, pull them all the way back. This is a really great exercise for people looking to strengthen their upper back, but don't want to do a lot of excess lower back work. Because as we all know, your lower back can only handle so much. We can't do 40 sets of Yates rows. But we could do, you know, 10 sets of chest supported rows possibly. You know what I mean? You'll see that I, uh, I really focus on arching, not just, not just pulling my shoulder blades back, but arching my back into it, hyperextending into it to mimic a deadlift. Uh, back extensions, obviously going very light on all these exercises. Um, notice I pull, again, pull my shoulder blades back, hyperextend, and squeeze my glutes very hard at the top. We're not worried about going all the way down to the floor. We're worried about squeezing your ass up at the top of the movement, getting your hips through on the deadlift. Shoulder blades back, hips through on the deadlift, tight, lockout, focusing purely on squeezing my ass on these. Um, might have to use a little bit more weight. Again, every exercise done here was used really light. Uh, this is the beginning of my deadlift peaking program, and mostly I wanted to focus on showing people what I already do. Um, didn't want to go too heavy because obviously that takes a little bit too much focus when I'm trying to videotape as well. Next exercise here is uh, leg curls. I prefer glute ham raises, but I also love leg curls. Um, I go to failure on these, and I will do a shitload of sets on these. These are a very crucial exercise, in my opinion, to uh, getting the best results possible, let's say, because obviously you can get stronger without them. But to get the best results possible, I always recommend a glute ham raise or a leg curl when training for powerlifting. Um, really, really helps with, I would say, the entire lift. You know, it's, it's kind of one of those exercises that just seems to really help out overall, build a lot of hamstring mass. It's not hard to do. can really beat yourself up at the end of a workout with, you know, five to ten sets of somewhere between ten and thirty reps, you know. Because most of the time, once you get really strong, you won't be able to find something where you can go really heavy. 
unless you have a glute ham raise. Next exercise here is seated calf raises. Calves are extremely important when trying to lift as much as you can. They are what braces you. They are what makes sure you go, don't go up on your toes when deadlifting or squatting, which can ruin a lift. Um, I do seated and I also do standing because I believe your calves have to be strong in the bent knee position and they also have to be strong when standing. That's going to be what stabilizes you, what allows you to put all your force into the floor, what keeps you from leaning too far forwards on a squat and good morning or missing a deadlift because it got too far out in front of you and your calves couldn't correct it. See me doing calf raises here. I'm not a big fan of the stretch. I'm doing these for strength. And um, primarily when you see me do these, I only take my heels down to the floor and then press up. I've never seen anyone go into a calf stretch position when deadlifting, and that's my main goal. As always, guys, thanks for watching my videos. Um, stay tuned for more in the new year. Going to do a lot more informative videos. And don't forget to check out the sales on MuscleMasochist.com. Thanks for watching, guys.